Well, let's explore this issue further. I'm now joined by Professor Susan Boyson. Uh, Prof, good evening. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Well, did I kind of come as well? Much to do about nothing. Mm -hmm, indeed. <laughs> yeah. All we know, it is a big war. It's a big factional war. It is that war reigned supreme 2017 to early 2018. It subsided slightly in a run-up to the election, of course, of the election campaign. So when ANC pleaded unity, unity, because it wanted the electorate to vote for one party. And now post-election, in, in a very presumptuous way, I would say this factionalism resumes. And uh, victory and the role that Sir Ramaphosa, the pivotal, pivotal role that he and his part of the ANC played to secure that victory for the ANC is now kind of thrown under the bus and the other faction, the Bro Zuma faction, we've just seen a few images floating around the screens. They are ready to take revenge and try, it seems by all indications... Well, I mean, they, the stormtroopers have gone wild on the back of this revelation saying, yeah. uh, you know, this man must be, this man must be kicked out. The former president also entering the fray saying, he's a known enemy. Yes, and well, it is fascinating. You know, it was open at that time, 2017-2018, that many people in the ANC wanted the ANC to, wanted Zuma to be gone. Of course, that was what the politics was about at the time. Now it's this kind of pretense of pristine innocence. Nobody ever was involved in any factional war, and it was a plot if there was any campaigning to get Zuma out of power. That was the politics of the day. It's politics in the streets of South, streets of South Africa the EFF and many of their protests in the out of parliament were pivotal in securing the pressure on Zuma and the fact that there was the threat early 2018 of a parliamentary majority against Zuma and with the ANC divided in that, it's because of that threat that Zuma eventually did step down and the NEC could turn and yes, tell Zuma to go. So that was open politics at the time. Derek Conacon himself was in the ANC is NEC, was, had led at least two, uh, probably more, I know two definitely, proposals for motions of no confidence in Zuma, which had not passed, but he was accepted then, and that politics was accepted, to test the waters to see how the NEC was turning or not. But now it has all become conspiracies and plots. Interesting indeed. I mean, Charles, looking at the statement um, that the ANC Secretary General issued uh, last night, looking at how bored uh, people like Karl Nehaus are. I mean, he was doing the interview uh, with mm -hmm. Sam Keller right inside the ANC headquarters and yes. talking about what needs to happen to Derek Hanakom as though he had all the power to actually make it uh, happen. Should we <laughs> what should we read into, oh, yes. in, into all of that? Uh, I was chuckling. So the spokesperson, spokesperson was having ruling there. And usually we only see him on makeshift podiums outside Jacob Zuma's court appearances. <laughs> and now he's right inside Latule House. And that really, also the presidency of the ANC is there, reluctance, reticence to come out and defend Derek Hanukkah at this stage, shows me that the... The Ramaphosa faction is probably not so secure in its power now, and that has happened because the Mahashules, the Zumas, have, are seemingly running around in ruling in Lutuli House. And we do not see an effective at this stage unless there is a delayed strategy that's going to surface at a later stage, but in the NEC, where with the power balance in recent times have been slightly more in favor of Ramaphosa than it had been in previous years. Maybe that can be counted efficiently there, but at this stage it is people, as you say, blatantly going out and advocating against Hanukkah and against Ramaphosa in many ways. Now, there are people who are saying, well, everyone who cares um, about this country's future should take care of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, take note of this moment, even take sides. Uh, but, but is this about recapturing, you know, of the state or a pushback by the mm -hmm. thieves and the thugs, as some people are suggesting, or is it the usual ANC internal wrangles playing themselves out again? Mm. 
can, yes, there are always these wrangles, and there were always new configurations of these wrangles to be playing out. But given the particular characters in this, and, and no politician is clean, I'm pretty sure about that, but there are relative balances there, and the names that we see against the, uh, lining up behind this fight back are the people with known and serious charges against them, uh, allegations, some cases charges against them, and they are certainly trying to dig themselves out of this. And in a way, it's, it's very a morbid kind of end game, because if this faction with the allegations and the evidence so far against them, if they take over, the ANC does not stand a chance of winning a future election. So it's almost as if this faction, allegations and some charges and much evidence against them and all want to kind of recapture the ANC so that they can run and rule the roost for the remainder of the term of, until the next election and then maybe take the ANC down with them. But I mean, those of us who take the view that, well, whether the ANC wins or loses an election is probably neither here nor there for some mm -hmm. of us. But what's important is whether if one or the other faction, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, gets to have full control of the ANC going forward, going forward, what the consequences of that may be for the country. And the Indeed. Rest of us. And you know, across the spheres of government, from local, provincial, national, we've seen so much evidence, and some people have done explicit, specific research about it, that when the factions fight, delivery and governance suffer. And that is of a great, great concern. At the ANC's infighting is superseding national interest. So we shouldn't ignore this. Definitely not. This is a serious moment in South Africa's poli South African politics and the fate of government. Prof, thank you very much for your time and insights. Thank you for your